All right, guys, this is going to be the week seven breakdown in a new scenario. Got my guest spot still here, Kit Dockery. Backed by popular demand. Popular by some people. So we're going to jump right back into uh, kind of some of the same topics we talked about last week. First of all, we're going to start with some of the key matchups from last week. Not every single one. Let's start with the key ones. So some of the ones that I feel like are worth touching on are... Dennis, we're going to start with uh, Dennis against James. All right, we had a 4-1 and one team, the auto-drafters Dennis Key, against a 5-0 and oh team, thanks to the NFL stat correction. Now, after Julio Jones went out, it looked like this was going to be a little bit shaky, but Dennis takes it. He takes it 261 to 196. James's team kind of took a crap on him, and I really am shaky about your future, James, so I really hope you're scanning that waiver wire. Um, we also had the... Uh, Winless team, Art Collins against John Manalais. These are two pretty terrible teams. And pretty terrible. It was really anybody's matchup at this point. And this is, in fact, the only matchup that Dockery was wrong about in his picks from last week. He what? picked Art Collins, the underdog, to win, but that was not the case. John Manalais took that matchup. John is 2-4. and four. Art is still winless. Art, you suck. You're terrible. Terrible. Pick it up. Seriously. The only other one I'm going to touch on this week was uh, William against Eric. We had the Pittsburgh Fielders 5-0 and against Team FedEx in your face, 1-4. and All right, this looked like it was going to be a blowout. Turned out it was actually much, much closer than that. If William had started maybe a couple more key players from the waivers, it could have swung in his favor. As it turns yeah. out, it was one of the lowest scoring matchups this week. Eric would have lost against eight other people if he had played. Any eight other people. He's Three people in this league he would have beat. He's unbeatable. Three people in this league he would have beat, but he actually played against one of them this week. Eric, you had a shit week. I hope that continues. So, uh, going into the standings, we're kind of in a hodgepodge now at this point. So, we really only have one unbeaten team left, and that's Eric Hopkins. We have one winless team left, and that's Art Collins. We have a really big hodgepodge of about eight players between four and two and two and four. So, considering we're only six weeks in, we have seven weeks left to play. It's anybody's game still at this point, all right? We got six of 12 players in this league going to the playoffs, so do not give up on your team just because you are two and four. It's not over yet. Keep not it going. All. It's very exciting still at this point. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to my guest spot, Kit Dockery. We're going to go over Kit's picks again for week seven. We're going to see kind of uh, what he thinks week seven is going to be all about. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, I, I'm a little bit surprised about uh, our picks last week, but hopefully I can keep the accuracy going. Um, so we're going to real quick go over some matchups I think we should watch, and then of course the scores overall. Uh, matchups we should watch in terms of they're going to be enjoyable, they're going to be close, it will mean something. Uh, we will start off with one that's going to be close, and I think close to me and you as well, uh, but I'm playing Derek this week. That's a 3-3 three and three team versus a 4-2 and two team. And it's a pretty close line. We're talking one point either way. That's the line. Um, it should be a fun game. We've been shit-talking all week. I hope you guys get on the smack board and let us know what's up. That's a game to watch. Uh, another game to watch that's going to be good is you have the now still undefeated Pittsburgh Feelers going against 5-1 and one James. Um, that's going to be a close one. I think it's going to have uh, far-reaching ramifications for all of us in the middle as you know anybody at the top dropping gives a little bit better chance to sneak into a seed spot. So Hopefully that's good. James. Hopefully, James. Um, and then, of course, my last one I think will be fun to watch. We're going to see uh, Max versus William. That's uh, William, who almost pulled up an up upset last week, is going to go for it one more time. Um, and the projection is actually right now 20 points in William favors, and that's without his kicker in there. So that should be a fun one to watch for us all. So there you go. Uh, did you even touch on all of them? No, no, no. Because no, no, we're now, now picks. God damn it, now, we're, picks. now we're going to do the picks. I know all we've right, all been picks. waiting for it. All right, so... Obama's Chemical Weapons versus Doc Disc Smashers. That's 3-3 three and three versus 4-2. and two. Uh, I'm going to take myself by a smidgen. Of course he is. By a smidgen, but I think I'm actually going to win it. Next Not up, we have Keys Crushers 5-1 and one versus the Hamburglers with Brad Tate, who's 2-4. and four. I'm going to take Keys Crushers, the auto-drafting phenomenon. I think he's going to do it again. I think he's going to go to 6-1, and one, and I think we're going to hate him for it. Next up, we have Art Collins and his shit-ass team, as we all know. And, of course, Paul, the ever-so-talented yet strangely strangely losing Paul. Uh, I'm going to take Paul, though. I think he's going to give it to Art. I think Art's going to go on seven. Next up, we have Pittsburgh Feelers. Uh, of course, first UPS Freight Train. We just touched on that. I am going to take James. I think with uh, the shutout that we uh, saw last week from uh, the record setting as of right now, Jimmy Graham, 
Uh, and of course, Jimmy Graham, as well as all New Orleans, is on bye. I'm going to take James on that one. I think we're not going to see an undefeated guy next week. Uh, last, our uh, next last two here, we're going to have Reeve versus John. Uh, that's three and three Reeve versus two and four John. I'm going to take Reeve in that. I think he's got a better team. I think John's pretty terrible. And last up, of course, we have Max Bueller's Space Popes at three and three, and Team FedEx William. Uh, I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to take William. I'm going to take him. I think he's going to pull off an upset this week, and uh, I think we're going to be surprised. All right, there you got it. Uh, Kit six picks. He's going to lose at least one of those because I'm going to beat him, so he's at least going to be one of those picks out of the waiver. Not now, happen. We're like I said, we're six weeks through. We have seven more weeks left to play before the playoffs. It's still anybody's game. It really is. Continue on your team. Hit the waivers. Hit your lineups. Watch your bye weeks. They're coming up. They're going to be frightful. I know I got a really bad bye week coming up. Yeah. I'm sure we all do at some point. So, um, again, one other thing to touch on, the trade deadline is approaching. November 15th is the trade deadline. No more trades allowed beyond that point. So if you're going to trade anybody in the league, do it now. I know there was some controversy this week. Uh, hopefully we can move past it. But regardless, that's aside the point. Trade deadline coming up. And uh, one last thing to add, gentlemen, is there have, over the past couple weeks, been a couple sleepers, a couple good finds on the waiver wire that really a small majority of teams are picking up, and they're killing with it. So make sure you're looking at the waiver wire, you're doing your research. It's easy as getting the ESPN app. You could get a lot more wins as simply as fucking taking the five minutes out of your day to pick up a waiver wire pickup. All right, guys. Well, that's your uh, week six breakdown. Best of luck to all of you. No more faggot swears this week. I really do wish you all the best of luck, and hopefully... Half of you will get wins, obviously, so, you know, hopefully it's the better half of you. Uh, we'll see you guys all in week seven.